Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul and an even more modified version of Real Visual Enhancements. You may notice the planet Earth in the background has a more suitable tint of blue as far as I'm concerned. And first I am going to talk about how I did that. Uh, if you will permit me to bring up Notepad. Uh, the first thing is this is RSS underscore scatterer fix dot CFG and it is in the scatterer configs of RVE and it had this line here, sun color and that's for Earth and you'll notice none of the other bodies had this sun color line so it is unique to Earth and very importantly this originally had a very blue tint uh, the, it's RGB so it's red, green and blue and so this is a extra blue color to make Earth look very blue so I commented that out. <laughs> I commented that out, get rid of it, no more, no more super blue. Uh, that's simple enough, right? And basically I wanted Earth to look more or less the way it did in 1.8.1 where I was using RSS visual enhancements. And I found that RSS visual enhancements had a file that real visual enhancements did not in its Copernicus folder. And so Real Visual Enhancements has Copernicus patches, but all they do is add rings to Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Uh, there are other things that can be adjusted in Copernicus that RSS Visual Enhancements did. A lot of sunlight color and stuff, uh, Corona and a Corona texture. I had to put that particular file into this install as a result because it's being referenced. And uh, the emission colors and Venus's ambient color and the atmosphere wavelength, uh, however you want to feel about that. Uh, interestingly, uh, Earth is still re referenced as Kerbin here, but I think it still works actually. And so it has an ambient color, uh, which is more blue than the other things. And it also has uh, this wavelength here. And so we have the same sort of thing for Mars. Mars is redder and uh, so forth. And so I just decided to add this in. Uh, I just put it, uh, added it into the config folder for real visual enhancements. And that seems to have improved things. So we get this. That's the first uh, big change. I have tried modifying things to stop the shuttle from exploding. And I found something that helped but it didn't help all the way. The shuttle still exploded, it just exploded later. So uh, to quickly show you that little bit, this file called ro underscore far config didn't used to exist in Realism Overhaul. Uh, Realism Overhaul did not attempt to modify far, far just did what far did. Uh, but now in the more recent versions of Realism Overhaul, uh, Realism Overhaul did decide to modify things with far and in particular, uh, I've commented it out right now, but it changed this exposed area limited to false when it was originally true. And it also set this difficulty preset. Now, if they're right that this difficulty preset is full drag strict area ruling, that's what I want anyway, so I don't care. But it it is worth pointing out that with far, I... I'm using the same version in 1.8.1 as I am in 1.12, so there shouldn't be any changes, but Auro has made some changes in this version that weren't in the other version. Uh, so what it's changing is this thing, limit exposed area to radiative area value. A little bit hard to decode what that means. There's a whole block for this exposed area uses KSP hack. You'd think that they would turn off a KSP hack off, and that would be the one they'd go after, but that's still on actually. Uh, so yeah, uh, that noticeably says, note that this will likely return greater values than stock, so heating will be increased. Uh, so we definitely don't want to turn that off, <laughs> but they didn't turn it off, so that's okay. But at putting this back to true instead of having it to false did allow the shuttle to survive longer, but not long enough. So that is one thing, and I'll continue to hunt for other changes. But anyway, our main thing this time is visuals, and people said that they wanted waterfall. Everybody wants waterfall. So, okay, fine, I give up. Uh, we are going to see the shuttle with waterfall. 
I added waterfall to the shuttle's engines, not to the AJ-10 190s. I like the AJ-10 190s the way they are. But I did change the SSMEs and the SRBs. And here I'm using the RO waterfall configs. And they already had a modification on the stock version of the big booster, the massive booster. And that is generally modified to be the shuttle boosters. So I just copied the same sort of thing, but adjusted the size of it a little bit. And so basically we are doing that. Oh, I didn't notice there's a RSRM configuration 1981. I guess that means that there's a, oh, there's a 1986 version after the Challenger disaster. So maybe we should, it doesn't actually change the stats at all. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I like the non-Challenger one. And then there's a film, filament wound case version, which is lighter. We'll just stick to the to the safer one. Anyway, so there was that. But for the SSMEs, I had to figure out exactly. There is a SSME waterfall template, but the sound I went with uh, pump fed medium one that was recommended by Pekka and I have resized it. So let's see how it looks. Okay, so here we are again. And what you'll notice is that the close-in water looks very blue, but as we get more atmospheric scattering, as we get higher up, it'll get less deep blue. So that's the sound. We have the engine-like thing, which Waterfall has. So I had critiqued Waterfall, and the reason I critiqued Waterfall is really this is too clean. I mean, it's it's nice and frazzled back here, but this is still way too clean, and and the color is also perhaps a little bit too clean. The sound could do some work as well, I feel. Now, clean is good for the SSMEs. I'll grant that. The shuttle main engines, basically, their plumes always were very clean. Uh, but the boosters or Carolox engines, like the ones used on Falcon 9, they aren't this clean. And the way I compared to, what I compared to is like Auto-Tune. This is basically the plume on Auto-Tune. Yes, it's cleaned up. And so the imperfections in the singer's voice are not as apparent. But I'd rather like to hear the natural voice of the singer, even if they are imperfect. So uh, it's just a little bit too cleaned up, is my point. And again, for the SSMEs, because they are perfect singers, I I don't mind that so much. But it is okay for the boosters. I, I'll keep it. But we need to work on the sound a bit, obviously. This was an SRB sound that they had on the massive booster, the stock massive booster. And again, uh, Realism Overhaul put this on, and it's not bad, it's just could be better. <laughs> it could be better. I toned down the sound of the Pump Fed Medium 1 because the SSMEs were actually getting somewhat louder than the solid rocket motors, and I felt that that was wrong. Okay, off go the boosters. And more or less at this point, the SSMEs sound the way they normally sound. Now, another issue is the way the plumes look as we get into vacuum. They are way too obviously a flickering mesh, um, as opposed to particles. And we'll see with the AJ-10-190, it looks a lot more like particles than a flickering mesh. Yeah, it's not the most satisfactory thing. Of course, in space, most of the time you can't even see the plumes, so if we want full realism, uh, it'd be even more boring. Uh, and let's not talk about the sound. Anyway, we have a long way to go yet. But you can see the color of the world has been improved, I think. I mean, by, by my standards, by my desires. Uh, as we get higher, the land is not as distinct, and I would like to figure out some way to make sure that the atmospheric scattering doesn't completely kill the distinctiveness of the land and make it all blue. That's another problem. 
But again, I think waterfall. Uh, people who say that waterfall is wonderful. I, I'd say on an engine to engine basis, I would not want to change out the Merlin real plumes for waterfall plumes because the Merlin real plumes have the proper interference between the engines, and there are nine engines, right? So if you have particles, they interfere with each other and create the kinds of effects that you will see from a Falcon 9 launch. Whereas if you have a bunch of meshes, they're not going to quite work the same way. It'll be interesting to see what a super heavy launch actually looks like. Because the Raptor engines have fairly clean plumes. Will we really see just 33 or however many, I think it is 33 right now, uh, very, very clean plumes? Or will we see something a little bit more complicated? Okay, so as we get close to completing orbit here, just keep in mind the SSME plumes here, and we're gonna get the AJ-10-190 real plumes, and we'll see the comparison. I did manage to fix the roll problem I had during re-entry. It doesn't have any sort of roll issues. I'm very pleased with how KOS has been doing. KOS seems to have been improved dramatically compared to in 1.8.1. And it would be worth upgrading to 1.12 just for the KOS improvements. Uh, I, it's possible that those are also applicable to 1.8.1, I don't know. I just haven't updated KOS in a while. So putting Waterfall on the shuttle engines and the shuttle boosters is one thing, but of course now that I've accepted this fate, I have to figure out how to decide which of the engines that I've made, like the shear strut engine pack and all, deserve the Waterfall configurations and which ones deserve the real plume configurations and then put the appropriate ones on each. So now there is a great sorting that needs to happen as well. So this is the real plume for the AJ-10 190s. And it's got a sort of character all on its own. They might be a little bit small right close to it actually, but overall, compared to the SSME textures, I actually like this, right? Um, I, I probably wouldn't want to put Waterfall on the AJ-10 190s because they, they sort of have a nice character to them. At least I feel that way. Yes, but yes, they're particles. <laughs> but, uh, darn it. So anyway, may, maybe you feel differently about it, but I, I, I don't want the flickering mesh version of these guys. Okay, we are in orbit. Like I said, I already know that I can't re-enter, but what I wanted to show was the look of the world with the adjusted blue. So this is what it looks like right now, but uh, the, the land texture may be just a little bit too washed out still, but at least it's not the very deep blue that we had before. And on the shuttle, the shuttle has a little bit of a blue tint. That it's getting from it, I think. I don't know. Planet Shy might not be doing as much as I'm used to it doing, though. Gotta figure out the shadows. So we've got the 64k textures of the world, but uh, we're, we're not really getting the wonderful effect of that, are we? I mean, it, it looks pretty. It's just really hard to see the distinctiveness of it because of the way the atmosphere is scattering the details. Uh, of course, we've got clouds in the way, but that's a separate issue. So yeah, I mean, we're we're over land, but you'd hardly know it. So as the shuttle turns, uh, well, that has been my progress so far. We will see what else I come up with. But tell me what you think about the waterfall textures and I mean the waterfall plumes and the sounds. If you have any suggestion when it comes to the SRE sounds. With the shuttle now in nighttime around the world, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below.
and I'll see you next time.